this is Andrew Loran with Conscious Life News and I'm very excited to be here today with international um, spiritual teacher and author and specialist in dream interpretation, Kaya. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hi. So we are here to discuss today your newly released book, The Source Code, which is a dream dictionary. So I understand it's based on over 15 years of research and study. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's. A, I think it's a, it's a work that is very, very important to help people to understand their dreams and, and to find these answers that we receive every night. Most people, uh, they do not necessarily understand how dreams can help us to mm -hmm. accelerate our evolution, to change ourselves, to understand the memories also that we have accumulated over time. So the best way to, to understand what is your soul is to see it as a living computer mm -hmm. that records positive and negative memories through all the experiences. So, so this book is really a very a deep work about understanding also the plus and the minus of each symbol and there's a and it's it's been it's it's a lifetime work for me that's for sure and I went through some uh, very very difficult time also before I had reached the capacity to to understand these dreams but today for me it's a it's a great uh, joy for me to be able to to be there and to share this knowledge uh, to the yeah, I read in the foreword that your daughter wrote, which is very beautiful, and she had uh, mentioned about the difficult time she had because there was a phase where nobody understood what was going on for you, and it was like a, being mocked by society and being pushed aside. And now, obviously, you have so much going on. So do you, and also you wrote that um, one dream can change your life. So could you tell us a little bit about your journey from that time and, and where you are today? So 18 years ago, 20 years ago actually, I was, uh, I was uh, a multi-platinum recording artist uh, mm -hmm. in Canada. So uh, I had the life that everybody can dream of. Uh, uh, I was with Sony Music and uh, with the same entourage, Celine Dion. So, so I had like a whole career in front of me and that was there. And I was living in a lot of abundance, but I was feeling empty inside because the spiritual side of me I've always been there since I was a little kid, uh, and this aspect was even always the, the notion, the, the, the deep uh, connection for me with music. Music was the expression of inner states, was the expression, it was the possibility to meet and help people. So for me, the notion of being a missionary inside of me was, I've always been there, but with time, with the superficial aspect of uh, of this life, of show business and everything, even if there were some great and beautiful moments, of course, but inside I was like searching for something more deeper. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I was someone that was very, very, very sensitive. This was so intense for me. Uh, it took a long time for me to understand this, and now for me it is like one of my greatest gifts. Uh, uh, but at the beginning, when I was young, uh, I was like scanning information and, and I was so sensitive, mm -hmm. so it was difficult for me to, to, to understand who I was, in a sense. So, so I was very shy, I was not talking a lot, I was really in music, I was a perfectionist, someone that was working day and night in studios, so I started when I was six years old, so, mm -hmm. so, so I did 20 years uh, career in, in the music industry. Uh, so, uh, so, so when the dream, when the dream started to appear in my life, it, it became my new musical child, mm -hmm. and I, and I just wanted to know more and more and more. So when I walked away, I was on, on top of the success uh, in my career. I was number one on every radio station. So, so people uh, didn't really understand this transition that I was doing, and even myself. Mm -hmm. I was like kind of uh, completely, completely. In turmoil and deep questioning about, uh, about the meaning of life and uh, because I, at the age of 26 years old uh, I built the life that everybody can dream about and, and, and I was not happy and it, I was feeling empty and, uh, and I was searching for God, I was searching for 
deeper meaning and I have found communication with the divine and a true and profound evolution, true the understanding of my dreams. And the dream started in a very, very, it was, it was amazing what happened to me during that time uh, because uh, 18 years ago, uh, uh, this was one of the major moments that created this transition. I was, I was uh, very involved with different foundations, so I have a foundation myself, so, so for me it's important to, to give back. Mm -hmm. to this, this is, mostly this is who I am. And, and uh, so I was very involved with uh, different foundations of children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the Children Wish Foundation just called me, and there was a young woman. She was 19 years old, she was about to die for, from cancer. And, um, and uh, she, uh, uh, she received a dream that she needed to see me before she died, mm -hmm. and she was. Uh, so I took the first plane to go and visit her, and uh, it was amazing what happened. In a sense, I had one of the most profound afternoons of my entire life, and so we had very, very deep discussion, and uh, and uh, even aspects are still secrets in me because she mm -hmm. revealed things to me that she that she knew and that she. She, she saw in the dream about what, what was going to happen to me in the future. Oh, okay. So, uh, and, and I've always knew that because since I was a little kid, I've always had this spiritual secret world inside mm -hmm. of me. And uh, so two weeks after she passed away, and, and uh, without knowing that she just died, during the night she came to visit me in a dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was amazing. Amazing. She she came to me and and she she said uh, that uh, they had like a major mission for me in the world to do and and that I would go through a major transformation before that and she said they had they, that that she that they had a gift for me and she brought me in a large black room and in this room there was a large table and in the middle of the table there was a square like a mirror. And in the mirror, I was able to see the tunnel of light that we see when we die. Oh, wow. And she said to me, normally you have to die to see this. So you would have seen it while you are alive. So don't be shy. Talk about it. This will completely shift your consciousness uh, forever. So I woke up in the morning and I, I, I was completely transformed. I had like this crystal blues and colors and it was such a lights that was so beautiful, things that I've never seen here on Earth. And not just the mention of uh, having seen it, something, it, it, it was not just the notion of seeing it, it was the notion of uh, what it had done inside of me. And uh, so I had tears of joy and I was all, uh, it was intense, then, uh, then I just woke up five minutes after, my, uh, my agent just called me and he said, you know, uh, the family is thanking you. Just got the call and she just passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, so I didn't say a word to him. I was so secret with my spiritual world. I was not talking, I was not ready to discuss that to anyone. Mm -hmm. Even in the newspaper, I was doing interviews in magazines all the time, and TVs, and I was like just doing the same, you know, the, you know always saying the same things. And then, you know, like you just, yeah, it's my career, I'm happy, and that, <laughs> sign with Sony Music. Yeah. You know, so, so I was just like, you know, not playing the game, but sort of, mm -hmm. sort of. And, uh, and um, so if I had an interviewer that was like really, really connecting with me, then I was talking and talking and I was, it was so easy. But then as soon as I was, I was so sensitive that it was difficult for me to, if the person was like thinking about too many things, then I was getting confused mm -hmm. and I was not able and I was shy. So anyway. It was a major, major shift of transformation that happened to me. And after that one dream. After that one dream. And then after that dream, I started to receive 10 to 50 dreams every night. Oh, wow. That's a lot of dreaming. <laughs> and I still continue to do that until today. And for me, dreams are, have become my, my, my source of evolution, my source of knowledge, my source of uh, discovery. Also it's important. interesting because we spend half of our lives sleeping. Yes. So to not take note of or pay attention to the information 
-hmm. that we're getting at that point kind of seems it would seem ridiculous for you to ignore half of your waking day <laughs> that's true really? and, and most people do not understand uh, with dreams we really reach our spiritual autonomy mm. this is we receive our own answers it's the representations of our consciousness symbols are are there to express qualities or weaknesses or a little bit of both uh, with dreams we can meet people we can we can have premonitory dreams about the future and we can see the past, the memories that people sometimes have in them without even knowing it. So we understand the, fun, the fundamental aspects of personalities and the way we function. So I have studied dreams for so long and, and, and I, when I walked away, I, I lived at, as a hermit for many years. So I, you know, from stardom to, to being a hermit, you know, it was a major shift that I have done. I do not recommend that to anyone mm -hmm. because I'm walking here in the streets of, you know, on Venice Beach, you know, every morning I do my meditation and I walk and I have seen so many people living in the street. And mm -hmm. for me, I had a lot of abundance, so, so, so it was not possible for, 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 you know, that I would go that way because I was not using drugs or whatever, alcohol, whatever, I've never I've been. I was mostly in prayers, you know, that was the main aspects of who I was. So, so, and I, so, but, but when I see that, I have like years of, of uh, just searching and praying and just uh, entering a deep meditation to receive the source code and now to be able to share it. Uh, because I truly believe that this dictionary is not a normal book and it will be in the future. Uh, it is done through our foundation. And so we don't have like uh, tons of money to make, you know, publicity, whatever. But I'm truly sure that this book will become, in the years to come, something very, very important. Now, this is not just something you've put together yourself from doing your own dream work. You've been working on this, like I said, for over 15 years. And with psychologists, psychiatrists, other professionals, and they're also using this book. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yes, but through the years I've started to share uh, before that book just, you know, arrived, so I started to share through uh, lectures mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and and the notions of the dreams that I was explaining it was like kind of creating huge opening in for psychologists and doctors and teachers in many countries so I got invited from one place to another to share the experience that, that, I, that I was doing and, and living in dreams and explain the fundamental aspects of dream interpretation. And, and most of all these people, be, be, with time, uh, they, 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 they have become my students, so, so, and then we just worked, uh, they, they participate uh, to, uh, to do the research and to help me to, to bring that, that major work uh, now in, in place for people. Mm. And now you say that we're like individual computers, part of yes. a cosmic computer. So could you speak a little bit about that? Yes, that, that is something that you see when you dream a lot. It's like you travel in mountain mansions. So, so for me, in, in one night, I can be in 10 countries mm -hmm. and I can go and help people. I can see how my daughter is doing, or my father, my mother. I can validate the information the day after and the weeks after. I can have information when someone's going to die before everything is, is, is in process. So I am used to, 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 to deal with premonitory dreams. At the beginning it was very disturbing mm -hmm. and I know we have viewers that are I'm sure when you start to receive a lot of dreams and a lot of uh, because it's, it, it doesn't come only with the beautiful dreams and the, the lights and everything it's like uh, at first you you go through a major shift and you receive a lot of nightmares and for me nightmares are very important aspects of evolution, it's important and it's part of the teaching that I give and share that we need to de-dramatize the nightmares. We have to see them as potential, uh, negative potential that we have inside for a percentage of memories. We have beautiful qualities in us, beautiful mm -hmm. aspects. We're not only that nightmare. That's important to really, uh, when, because it's so intense when you receive a very powerful nightmare. It's like. Uh, and especially when you dream a lot, you're so you're, the unconscious is so open, then you go up and down, and it's, it, it creates like a, your your consciousness shift to a level of being more collective. 
So this sensitivity creates like a, an awareness that is very large and very deep. And this is what we can see sometimes with schizophrenia, people in, in a psychiatric mm -hmm. hospital. Some of them, they have an extraordinary potential. It's just because they have, like, they are, uh, the, the unconscious uh, have been opened before the time, before, mm -hmm. before they have cleansed negative memories, the ego, especially, lots of their, their, because there's two ways to open the spiritual world and, and, mm -hmm. and the connection to dreams. It's like, uh, Either you meditate and you pray and you really devote yourself very intensively to open the, the, the doors of yourself and, and the positive and the negative, of course, to evolve and improve yourself. Or you can have a major ego and you can be like so intense with just wanting to develop spiritual powers mm -hmm. and then you can open the doors. So, and, and, so for me now, the movies, the new movies that we see, there's a new series now, like Intelligence, uh, that has just been, you know, on the air right now. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, there's many like that, you know, two more people, etc. Uh, the Smallville, you know, that a few years ago. So all these new series are, for me, when I watch that, that's how I live concretely mm -hmm. during the night. I have so much information. I can I can read the paper before it's going to be out, mm -hmm. and I can have. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing, the power of the spirit and the power that we all have within ourselves. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. But we need to be ready to deal with that level of awareness. And it is like, uh, and we need to cleanse the memories. We need to transform ourselves to really have access. But this is there for all of us. And so do you do just some kind of prayer, meditation, intention setting before you go sleep? Because it, I think what a lot of people may be more concerned about is opening up to that world and having no control or no, not knowing how to navigate it more than not having control of it. So what would you say about some parameters they could put into place before they start? I like the word navigate that mm -hmm. you use. It is true. And uh, the way that I have done, it's true intention. Mm -hmm. and true mantras. So what happened to me is I was so drawn and so intense in this in the study of my dreams. I just want I, when I was a hermit for, for years I just wanted to know more. So so I, I started to I started because I was staying in bed 20 years 20, uh, 20 not 20 years but 20 hours a day. Oh, so wow. <laughs> I was a little bit extreme. I have to say that. I have to be honest that's for sure. I could have lost myself. I always say that I've been blessed to receive this opening, but uh, but my quest was intense, and, and I was I just wanted to become a better person. And uh, so what what I have done, and what I have discovered, and what I share also in my work is I have started to do uh, mantras with questions. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning I didn't know because I was so intense, just knowing like say what's the meaning of the table, for example. What is the meaning of the tables? What is the meaning? I was thinking about the table in my meditation. And then I just, at that time, I just, I just fell asleep. And then I, I was in a dream and there was a teacher. And, he, and I was in a classroom and he was just saying, all right, today we're just going to talk about the, the symbol of the table. <laughs> and then he started to write the definition on the board. <gasps> and then I was able to remember all the information and I was just waking up <gasps> and then I had that in my mind I started to write this down right away and then it was making total sense and I was learning from that so I have discovered that the more I was concentrating mm -hmm. the more I was focused the more I was able to open parallel worlds so this is what I have done so I have done that for, for years just to know more about symbols and I was repeating it as a mantra, the notion of the... And then after, my, I met my wife because I went to a, I went to a bookstore and, and, and just because I had a dream with the King Solomon at the time of Jerusalem, it was, it was such a powerful dream and there was a wedding that was about to happen mm -hmm. in front of the Covenant Hawk, it was so... It, it was a princess, it was so beautiful, she was all in precious stones and the King Solomon was there, it was so official. And I had this dream and I didn't know much about the King Solomon because I don't come from a religious family. You know, my, my parents were like, uh, 
I was very spiritual when I was young, but I was not like uh, too much involved in the Bible or aspects like that. It was just I was going to church uh, by myself uh, to sing, and mm -hmm. it was very, it was done in a very simple way for me. My connection with the divine was more like a communication. So, so, uh, so, uh, so I went to the bookstore, and at the bookstore, uh, the, the owner was there, and he knew he was seeing me, uh, you know, in all magazines and everything, so he knew what I was, I was going through. And he said, there's a woman that just, uh, that, that comes from Switzerland, that now just arrived uh, mm -hmm. here in our region, so, and she knows about symbol, about the Kabbalah, and about uh, dreams, maybe we can get together. So I said, I left my phone number, and she called me, and then we, it was like at the beginning. She was like my sister. She was like uh, I, I never, never thought that she would be my wife. We were so close. It was like uh, my, it was like my twin soul. It was, it was very powerful. I felt completely happy. Completely, it was the first time that I was able to talk to someone about what I was going through and I was feeling that because she went through the same thing. So anyway, she introduced me to the research that she had done at that time and she was about to share with her first lecture and it was about angels. And uh, so, uh, from the Kabbalah, so, so, so it, was, it was very special because uh, for me, dreams and an angel, and then she said when you work, when you do mantras with the angel, it triggers dreams mm -hmm. and it triggers like, uh, so for me, it was like kind of, wow, all right. And I, and I felt totally in sync with that. Right away, it was like, I've always knew that. It was like you put a chip in your mind and it's like, all right. And then I started right away to do the mantras. And then my dreams started to be structured. Because mm -hmm. I have learned to do intention, to question, mantras with questions. What's the symbol of a table? What's the symbol of a table? Then I, I started to use the name of an angel to receive dreams it, because an angel, people think that it, it is like a little being with wings, a baby with wings, but it's a state of consciousness. Mm. It's not a person. It's not a. It's a. It's a. It, it is an angel is the representation of the qualities and the powers of God. So by doing the mantra, then my dreams started to be structured, mm. and I started to receive dreams that with the qualities, my beautiful dreams. I was able to interpret to have the theme of the dream. And my nightmares were in the human distortions linked to that angel. So that's, I started to have a geographical map of, uh, and I, I was able to navigate. You see, I was able to navigate and to be focused and to go right where it was secure also, in a sense. because, And then this, with this, then I just continued my path for a long time and to travel in parallel worlds and to come back and, here and you know all the time to bring answers and to and to transform myself. And here's a question for you because you know um, I believe in this reality and other dimensions within our own psyche. There's a play of duality, light, dark, good, evil, mm -hmm. so on. And I think the only you know divinity transcends both of those. So do you have? I know you talked about navigating through angels, but do they also? guide you and protect you in transcending the du duality space of the dream world? Uh, the, when you work with angel, you start you receive a lot of nightmares. But mm -hmm. because of the understanding, you know that you are visiting a little part of negative memories you have inside that mm -hmm. you can transform them. Because during the day, when I was waking up with a nightmare, I was not feeling good, it was intense, then I was doing the mantra of the angel to cleanse. Oh, interesting. And then eventually, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, it was like a blue sky in me. And I felt the memories that were gone. So this is actually not just doing dream work to try and understand what's going on, past, present, future. This is actually, you can use this to heal wounds, yes. to release emotional baggage in, on a cellular level and, and get it out of your system. Yes, that's correct. And most of the people, uh, they... they they, they do a path that is very abstract. Mm -hmm. They don't have real answers. Most people pray, but they do not really have real answers. They have feelings, they have, they have things, magical things sometimes that they feel. But with symbolic language, mm -hmm. we can understand not just our dreams, 
but our songs. We live in a dimension here. Life is like a dream. Mm -hmm. We're here to learn. We, the other person is a part of me. I experience something and I attract situation. I attract people exactly like in a dream. Because for me, God is a living computer and we live inside that computer. It's an energy that is so intelligent and so balanced and so synchronized. We know what computers are, so we know what we can do with a computer right now. It's amazing what we can do. And it's just like we have these computers for just maybe 50 years. That's the NASA and for us maybe 25, 30 yeah. years maximum. So we can imagine what, what and, and the, I think we have now the, 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 with technologies, we can understand that this technology exists within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's multi dimensions like internet. For me, I when I travel, it's like I'm on inter sky. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> so nice. so I travel in different parallel worlds, and I can I can visit people. I can visit the internet of someone, and know and, and visit the person to know what's going to be. Uh, you know, if I have affinity, if uh, and I, you can see the probabilities of, of the future because mm -hmm. the future can always change because there's all because we have free choices. So it's always in movement. But at the same time, sometimes probabilities are so condensed because they are related to a collective program. So they are going to happen because it's already in preparation. And, and so it's an accumulation of thoughts and feelings from so many people that create the realities that we live in. So, 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 so uh, for me, dreams are, are it's, it's extraordinary. When, when you have symbolic language, not only dreams, but symbolic language is the language of, uh, of the, uh, to marry spirit and matter. Mm. We can marry That's spirit and matter. There's a reason why we decorate our apartment the way it is decorated. There's mm. a reason. There's a reason why we choose and pick color for our car. If you buy a Mustang, you have the Mustang in you. Unless you don't, you, you don't feel attracted with, with that. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have that. It, you're going to go with a more classic car. You know, you, the Mustang, if you're not a sport person or someone with drive, you, you have to have that. There's a character that goes with a car. There's a character that goes with everything that we buy. Mm. We are always living our world in symbols. We, they, we build ourselves with symbols. So would you advise or, or deter anybody from actually using the book to pull the meaning from this dimension? Yes, of course. This book is not just when we see that dream <laughs> signs and symbols. For me, signs, it is here. Concrete mm -hmm. reality. For me, life is like a dream. Mm -hmm. We see things in the Matrix movie sometimes when something happens. For me, this is like, I am used to live like that. I live, and the more we work on ourselves, the more the realities transform, and the more we can have access in, in, uh, with, uh, and process lots of information, and we have a path that is more easy, because we don't, the less karmas that we have inside of us, the more we have transformed ourselves, mm -hmm. the more that you don't have to, because you can even anticipate in dreams when a problem is going to happen. When you have a danger, you'll be warned in dreams before because you don't have to go through that. Because negativity, evil is educational. Mm. So our negativity is only there for us to grow, to experiment things and to make choice and to learn not to do that. To evolve and, from it, yeah. Yes, to make a choice that, oh no, all right, I'm not going to do this because it will not lead me to something good. But certain people, they don't know yet. They're like children. And when you're a children, when you're a child, you just do, and, and then until it hits, until you have a it's problem, not working, yeah. and then you cry, and then all right, and then you change. So a soul has got a long process of evolution and of experimentation to 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 develop itself. Could you speak a little bit about boundaries and maybe the the misuse of? The dream state is there a yes we, yes we can say that we can say that that's a very very good question because some people sometimes they don't have the source code mm -hmm. they don't have the the notion of uh, of the fundamental aspects of symbolic language so they interpret their dreams with how they feel it mm 
Mm. And it's a first perspective that is important to do. Of course, we need the ambience, we need to feel the overall situation. But to have a precise answer and to be able to really connect yourself with an information, you need to understand symbolic language and the interaction with symbol. So the, the, the trap that can happen for certain people is when you dream and you think that there's an accident that's going to happen to your sister because you had that in a dream. But most of the time, it doesn't have to do anything with your sister. It is you. What is the representation of your sister for you? Oh, my sister, she's, uh, she's always like dispersed and going everywhere and doing so many things at the same time. All right, that's you. Today you have that energy in you, you're dispersed, you go in too many, you do too many things at the same time, and this can create, it can bomb people. Doesn't mean you're gonna have a real accident you know, during that day. But, but you them. have you have like uh, you have like uh, trigger in you uh, memories. You have you have started to accumulate memories of you just bumping a person, just not being polite. With a, with a waiter in a mm. restaurant, that's an accident. That's an emotional accident. Interesting. You see, so eventually, if you have too much memories of emotional accidents, then eventually you need to experiment a real accident, a condensation of your memories, and then of course it doesn't have to be the end of the world. It can be just like a small accident, and then you're going to feel all disorganized and then and, and sad, and then you're going to be more careful. When you're going to start to drive on the highway, you're going to be, you're going to keep an information in you of being more careful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the awareness is, is, is a process also of evolution through what we live and what we do. Okay, could you speak a little bit about um, why some people don't recall dreams? Because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's one of the questions I think that I answer the most when I do the lecture yeah. <laughs> because people are curious and some people uh, they, they they do not necessarily always remember their dreams. First, we have to understand that we all receive dreams, mm -hmm. even if we do not remember them. We we have inner computers; they are always open. We receive uh, emails and information and virus sometimes, or we yeah. wake up in the morning and we don't feel good. We don't even know why. But there's information, and there's a process of experimentation that is there, that is always in connection. Because the spirit, we have a body, but there's no boundaries, mm -hmm. in a sense. Inside of us, the only boundaries that we have are our lack of knowledge. And also, like children, up above, you know, the spiritual guides, they need to, like, manage our synchronicities to help us. But we have a free choice. We're not totally robots. But well, we can be sometimes, if they really need us somewhere, they can make, they're going to make us, you know, walk faster. So this way we can meet the person that's going to change our life, you know. It's like your father, the, the father that's going to say to his child, come on, you're going to eat, yeah, all right, we're going to school, let's do this now, you're going to yeah. be late, you're going to be late, and then he's activating more. So we can have like these intuition or forces of, uh, or metaphysical waves of, of, of energies, that adapts our program all the time, and they are there and to help us. So if somebody's not recalling them, but they are going on, so is that there's some kind of block? Or? Yeah, when, they, when the person w uh, doesn't remember the dream, there's, a, there's a, an unbalanced situation in the soul. Mm -hmm. uh, we have both polarities, so we have masculine and feminine mm -hmm. polarity in us. And uh, so our soul is andre andrageous, uh, so it's got the whole polarities. That's important because in dreams we don't talk about men and women. We talk about uh, feminine polarity related to receptivity in our world and masculine polarity to emissivity, so to exterior manifestation. So, so, so when we, we live in a world right now, we have never been so busy as humans right now. We have technologies, we have uh, responsibilities, so many things to do. There's TVs, radios, there's so many aspects. So if we go back a hundred of years ago, 200 years ago, it was another way of living. So now we have too much emissivity in our energy, and, and this is why it can trigger a difficulty for people 
uh, to, to receive their dreams. But, and, and the reason why they do not receive that, it's because they are, they are living a real dream most of the time. Because we have to understand that those who are very busy, successful, etc., they are so busy to meet the lawyer and the, and the CPA, etc., etc. So, so they, they, they are like always thinking, they have things to do. So the, the spirit is very busy to manifest, to do things. So mm -hmm. because of that, they sometimes they have like a, a lack of information from within. And they don't have time to take time for themselves also. Because... When to dream, we have to we have to meditate. We have to uh, we have to ask questions and take time. Vacation. This is why those people that when they don't receive dreams, they will dream, but when they are on vacation, because mm -hmm. they take care of themselves. So I always say to them, you are very busy, very responsible. You're superwoman or su superman yeah. in life with your family and everything. That's great. Stay like that because you're successful. You're creating opportunities, etc. But at the same time, don't burn the candle uh, on the two side. Yeah. You need to take time for yourself. You need to, you need to balance. You need to process the information uh, instead of just running and running and running. Uh, and eventually, you, know, you will have to take time for that. So this is, this is one of the notions that, that, that is important and a reason why certain people will not receive their dream. Of course, also to dream well, we have to sleep well. Mm -hmm. So if we dream just, uh, if we sleep just four or five hours, forget about it. You, know, you can't dream because you're, you're too stressed, and the, 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 phys the, the physical body has to needs the energy to renew itself. So, so we we really need to sleep well and take time for ourselves, meditate. So you see, how a person is very successful, very intense in life. And there are lots of opportunities, mm -hmm. less dream. A person that will have difficulties, that will have problems, more dreams. Why? Mm -hmm. Because there's more, there's an obligation to interiorize. You have nothing to do, so you think more. Yeah. <laughs> you think more, you take more time for you, or you cry, and your sadness creates questions. Mm. Also, makes creates, you look inside, yeah. Makes, exactly. So it's really about balancing the masculine and feminine, the doing, and the That's being, right. receiving right. and extending. That's so right. If you're not dreaming, audience, you need to slow down. And if you're dreaming, dreaming too much, maybe do something else as well. Then, then you are very gifted. <laughs> and it's going to be hard sometimes, that is for sure. You're going to wake up. So and certain people, they come to, to me and they say, I wish I could have less dream. And I say, no, don't say that. Don't say that. Mm. It's like you're the, one of the richest men in the world. Don't say you don't want money anymore. Just do something with it. Learn mm. to manifest yourself. Dreams are faculties, powers, spiritual powers. And some people, while they don't receive dreams also, a quick answer on that is they just like, they just don't know it's important. They don't know. Because we live in a world like, oh, I have a dream. And we think it's a cycle of images. It's a live program. It's like the programmation of your computer. One dream can change your life. With one dream, you can attract hundreds of situations during the day. Your whole program, your whole life can change because the dream will, or the nightmare, will explain aspects that are in process in you or in process of matter, materialization, concretization. Now, one of the most impressive things that I've seen as soon as I open the book is that you're actually using all of the profits from this book to go back into your nonprofit organization. So I just wanted to, you to take a moment to share with the audience about the nonprofit because I think it's very important work. Yes. Oh, yeah. For me, this is like you, you can't do a work at the level of when it's for humanity, it's for humanity. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, and I, uh, so for me, I've created, uh, I've co founded with my wife a non-profit organization called University Micro. So it's a multinational now uh, organization with offices in many, many countries. We have, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of uh, volunteers in many countries. In Europe, it's huge, in Canada, now in India, it's growing very, very fast. 
So, so we're very happy to, to, to be able to, uh, and, and to help because the nonprofit is based on, it's a publishing house at the same time. So mostly we have translators, we have teachers from many countries that are helping uh, to write books, to translate them in many, many languages. So, so this is like, uh, and there's, uh, we have many aspects, music also, we have authors, we have musicians. So it's, uh, it, it's, it is there f for the self-development and the work. It's basically to, for, to make the angels, dreams, signs and symbols, knowledge available to people uh, all around the world. So they can go on the website. So we have a website at uh, uh, 72angels.com. So 72angels.com. Or there's another link for it also. Uh, it's kayadreams.com. K-A-Y-A dreams.com. Okay. So now, although this is your latest book and this just came out last week, you do also have the Angels book with, um, uh, with a, basically, it's a dictionary of all the different angels with the mantras and so on. Yes. And there's teachings also how to work with angels and how to uh, understand because when we work with angels, our life starts to change, our consciousness. So, so some people that in the spiritual world, they... They, they, they see sometimes angels have baby wings or the religious aspect, but this is not the way we present it. We present it in a very concrete manner. You do the mantra, you receive dreams, you receive signs, you become an angel. And because you live a spirit, you know, you, you develop your wings of being, you know, develop the multi dimensions of your consciousness. So, so it's really a work that, and the book is very, it's not a philosophical it's book. book, it's really uh, a, a way of life. This book explains how we can live our life by working uh, with the angels. Yes. Okay, so I think that this Dream Dictionary book is not for the faint-hearted, not just curious. Oh, what did that mean? I think it's a very in-depth. I think it's a lifetime book. If you have it, uh, you have it, you will have it forever. And it will be just beside uh, your table, your night table, and it will be there. And it is just the first time also because there are going to be many more to come. And uh, so we are even thinking about uh, preparing, working actually on preparing a database also to, mm -hmm. to put, you know, the source code available for the world on a, on a very complex platform uh, on the internet. So, so our nonprofit is for that and we have devoted our life and we have lots of helps and people that can help. So if there's people that want to join us, they are welcome. We always uh, we're always there to join forces together, and uh, and I think this is a uh, this is uh, this is something that you, we you everybody's going to hear uh, because I'm very intense and <laughs> and I'm going to be there for many many years. Uh, Good, to, I hope so. To help people yeah. to, to to get the no the notion of symbolic language, and I truly believe, really really deep inside, and I have seen it in my dream that symbolic language will become one of the most important knowledge in the years to come. Because the new generation, they dream a lot. Mm -hmm. And they don't want, they don't want uh, you know, to follow anybody. That's the old way, old-fashioned way of, of the spiritual path. Mm -hmm. Tell me, give me the answers. You know? Tell me how to become like Jesus. Tell me to become like Buddha. Tell me, tell me, give me the keys. I want to become like you that. Want to do it, yeah. So I want to do it. So, 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 and the dreams are a direct connection. Mm. And it's a, and a capacity to reprogram ourselves. And it's no one that is saying us what to do. It is us. We receive dreams. And of course, we, we develop humility <laughs> with dreams. Because when you know what it means and you have a nightmare, and you know that it's like, <laughs> this is part of your personality. It's like, mm, it's not always easy. But it's the best way to develop compassion, to develop also a notion of understanding that negativity uh, is only there to be transformed. For us to evolve from. So I not only recommend the new book, um, I had a look through the Book of Angels and I, I would highly recommend that book as well for them to come together. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kaya. It was Thank such you. a pleasure to sit here and speak with you. Thank we will also be posting and put a little bit of information about the websites and so on. This is Andrew Loram with Conscious Life News. Thank you for watching.